after what can only be described as a shock result yesterday in qualifying for the Singapore Grand Prix, we went into the race today questioning whether Ferrari could do it over 61 laps on pure race pace. Were they the team to beat? Could they become the first ever team to get a 1-2 in Singapore? I didn't know that was a thing. That was an awesome statistic being thrown around today. Could Charles Leclerc become the third ever man to win his first race and then the next two after consecutively? Lots of questions going into today's Singapore Grand Prix. Spoilers ahead, so if you haven't watched the race, I'll say this now. Go through those first 10 laps. After that, pretty awesome race, to be honest with you. A real cracker. Awesome fights in the midfield. A tense battle at the front is how I'll describe that for the moment. However, if you've seen the race, let's talk about it in a little bit more detail. Because it was Sebastian Vettel, somewhat surprisingly, redeeming himself. Maybe not for all the mistakes he's made so far in 2019, but for the first time in over a season. The first time since the 2018 Belgian Grand Prix unless you count Canada, Sebastian Vettel has won a Formula One Grand Prix and now becomes the most successful driver ever in Singapore. Has the most victories of anyone with five. A really controlled race is how I'll put it for the moment. I I'm obviously trying to allude to later on, we'll go into a little bit more detail, but a Ferrari 1-2, nobody expected that on, well, on Friday. I think even yesterday, I think most people felt Mercedes would be able to really challenge in the race. And we've seen Ferrari's strategy fail, not only this year, but over the past couple of seasons. So to claim a 1-2 today, the first time this year, I can't actually remember the last time Ferrari got a 1-2. Please correct me in the comments below. Let's see how many of you brain boxes are out there. But definitely the first time in a long time Ferrari have got a 1-2. In front of Max Verstappen, Mercedes started P2 with Lewis Hamilton, started P5 with Valtteri Bottas, couldn't make the strategy work and ended up P4 and 5. I think a surprise for them, a little bit disappointed. We'll obviously talk about that whole kerfuffle and fiasco with strategy in a moment. Behind them, Alex Albon, just quickly on him, really impressed with his pace this weekend. Okay, I don't think... He could have particularly done better than P6 on pure pace. However, that's something Gasly wasn't able to do was hold on to P6. Gasly himself and his P8. Norris, best of the rest, P7. A really good job from him. Somehow, Hulkenberg ended up in ninth, And Antonio Giovinazzi, for the first time since 2015, was a driver outside Red Bull, Ferrari and Mercedes to lead a race. Awesome statistic. That is really good job from Gio. Looking a little bit further down the grid, Roman Grosjean ended up P11. On the face of it, that's a good result considering the pressure he's been under recently. But I think we're all aware it wasn't the cleanest race from Roman today. So, of course, we're going to be discussing that. All of them on the lead lap as well this time round. That's very rare that happens in Formula 1. But three safety cars helped that out. Also helped Carlos Sainz, who was two laps down at one point, end up in P12. Lance Stroll, Daniel Ricciardo, Danny Kvyat, all in the wars today, finishing 13th, 14th and 15th, respectively. Robert Kubitzer, I want to talk about him today. Blimey, announcing he's pretty much retiring from Formula One this weekend, or he announced it this weekend. What a race. Really good job from him today. And our final finisher, fastest lap holder, Kevin Magnussen in P17. Three DNFs today, Kimi Raikkonen, contact with Danny Kvyat, Sergio Perez, engine failure, and George Russell, contact with Roman Grosjean. Now, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, it was quite a chaotic race today. Okay, First 10 laps, a little bit stale. I think Martin Brundle said it was almost like a game of chess. And I've said over the last seven races now that have all been brilliant, and I think this race continued that trend, they've all been a little bit different. And today at the front, it was definitely a game, well, of chess, but also of cat and mouse. Who was going to go first with that strategy? Who was going to stay out a little bit longer? And we really had a strategical battle at the front. But what I also felt made this race so, so good, and what I personally think, I think we had the best midfield fight of the season so far in today's race. 
said that a little bit strange, but I really do think on a street circuit where overtaking should be nigh on impossible, a lot of these guys were making it look so, so easy. At the front, they were struggling to even get anywhere close, but in the midfield, almost every lap there was overtakes, plenty of stories up and down the grid. So I'm going to go through each driver one by one starting with race leader Sebastian Vettel, finishing with George Russell and the contact with Roman Grosjean. So, starting with Seb. Beginning of the race, early phase didn't really make much progress. The first lap, an awesome fight with Lewis Hamilton, an image there on screen of that. A brilliant job between the two of them. Great to see two multiple world champions going wheel to wheel. We don't see that often enough in Formula 1 these days. But... Hamilton got the better of Vettel on the first lap and we slowly saw the top six and even Norris to an extent and some of the guys in the midfield going around in a train. It was a little bit dull, but I think most of us, especially for us fans who watch Formula One in and out every time it's on and want to know every nitty gritty detail about Formula One, I think we were all expecting that. Give it a few laps, this is going to really erupt into something and it did. Through the pit stops, it was Vettel who blinked first, with Max Verstappen, proved to be a brilliant bit of strategy from Ferrari for Vettel's side of the garage, because Charles Leclerc stayed out, and Vettel, crucially, got the undercut, overtook Leclerc, stayed in front of Verstappen, eventually got past Hamilton as well. I mean, we'll, we'll kind of cover the whole strategic fiasco right now, but Vettel in traffic then, because then we had Antonio Giovinazzi, Daniel Ricciardo, Pierre Gasly and Lance Stroll still hadn't pitted. They were out in the net lead. Well, not net lead, but in the lead. Hamilton was actually leading. Then Giovinazzi in the train. Once Hamilton came in, Antonio Giovinazzi was leading. Hamilton came out behind the two Ferraris, behind Max Verstappen. Mercedes' strategy didn't work. And arguably, Bottas probably could have jumped Hamilton if they hadn't told him just to back off just a little bit. But we won't talk about that too much today. Bottas had a really quiet race, to be totally honest with you. But Vettel, crucially, and for me, we'll, we'll talk about driver of the day a little bit later on. But I think it was this phase of the race, not only where Sebastian Vettel won the race, but also gave him that chance to control it. And I think should definitely be, be in with a shout for driver of the day. Crucial in his overtaking. There was one move on Pierre Gasly at the end of the first DRS zone. It was really tight to contact. Gasly just bailing out at the last second, but Vettel decisive in his overtakes. Giovinazzi, bless him, Ferrari young driver, did move out the way a little bit easier than some of the other guys, but even that being said, Vettel making an awesome move on Daniel Ricciardo. Got it done so quickly, in fact, and Leclerc struggled initially. Vettel, before the first safety car, Got a five second gap on Leclerc. I think then as the race unfolded, we obviously had the three safety cars. Leclerc didn't really, well, wasn't really able to put much pressure on Sebastian Vettel. But what I really love from Vettel and considering the amount of pressure, I mean, he didn't really <laughs> say anything about that this weekend. But for sure, there must be something in the back of his mind saying, I've, I've got to win at some point in 2019. What he did on that third safety car. Bolted two corners earlier than he did the first two times. That caught off Leclerc off guard massively. And I thought to myself, that's the Vettel that we've been missing so far in 2019. A real sly fox move, if you want to call him that. And I thought to myself, yeah, really proving his experience. Which I don't think he's done often enough in 2019. But to be honest with you, Sebastian Vettel, an almost faultless drive today... But it has to be said, as we move on to Charles Leclerc, I think he almost had a faultless drive. And only through strategy, which Ferrari have said, to be honest, they couldn't really pit Leclerc at the same time as Vettel due to the gap behind. And due to the fact, even though they told Leclerc to go so slowly, there wasn't a gap for him to stop. And in fact, Vettel, there was a space. And I mean, make of it what you will. Leclerc didn't win this race because of strategy today. However, Ferrari are playing the team game. They have come away today with a 1-2. And you've got to think to yourself, if they hadn't stopped Vettel, that potentially could have allowed Hamilton to get that second place. And whilst Leclerc will be frustrated that he's not got a third victory in a row, and 
he's still second or well, third in the championship now, and this might potentially hurt his chances to get in second overall. For the team, Ferrari, they just need to secure second in the constructors now. The title's too far gone, in my personal opinion, but just to make sure they can secure second and build into 2020, that's their goal for the rest of the season. So for them, brilliant job. Leclerc, again, faultless drive from him. Just didn't have enough around the streets of Singapore to be able to catch up. I think Christian Horner said you need about two seconds pace advantage to overtake the car in front, which in the midfield we saw plenty of, and that rule did not work, but definitely at the front that was the case. Max Verstappen, 28th career podium. That's an incredible statistic. Couldn't quite believe that. Only 21 as well. Blimey. A quiet race from him today. I think lucky to be on the podium under the circumstances. I think it was more to do with Mercedes' strategical error than it was Red Bull really nailing it. Um, not really much to say. Tried to make a couple of moves on Leclerc. To had to defend from Hamilton a little bit late on. But to be honest with you, Max Verstappen, I think he was aware of it himself in interviews after the race. Quiet day. But points are points. He's now joint third in the standings. I think he'll be. I think he'll be happy with that. But again, not much to say on Verstappen, which I very rarely get to say. Back on the podium though, for the first time since the summer break. So for sure, much cleaner weekend from him this time out. Hamilton and Bottas fourth and fifth. I've alluded to them a few times this video. Mercedes strategy. You can rib into it as much as you want. You can say it was dreadful as much as you like. But I've even said this with Ferrari this year. Sometimes it just doesn't work. There's no way that every single race you can make strategy work. And very, very easily, we saw it in Silverstone with Hamilton. All it needed was that Grosjean Russell crash to happen a few laps earlier. And Hamilton could have been net lead, seven seconds in front. Mercedes won two. Ferrari can't get by. Such are the margins in Formula One. They're so, so minuscule. So the gamble didn't pay off today. But what I will say is Mercedes are that far in front in the drivers and constructors. I think they can afford to take the gamble. So Hamilton, I imagine a little disgruntled. It's not like Lewis Hamilton to go from the front row of the grid to off the podium without making a mistake. But it's just one of those races today. For Mercedes and traditionally over the hybrid era this has been a circuit they've struggled at so if it's going to happen at any race at least they've got a double points finish in the top five Bottas like Verstappen nothing really of note to say first lap came under pressure from Albon a little bit but apart from that quiet day Alex Albon though I was impressed with today I've mentioned it a few times Pierre Gasly if he was in the top six every race for Red Bull they would have kept him he wasn't. Albon today was with those top six. OK, he was on the edges of the top six, but he was there. He was always in shot. When you saw the leader at the back of the pack, you just saw Albon. And for his first ever weekend in Singapore, that's a good job in my books. Behind him, Lando Norris, I bet he's chuffed that a weekend finally just went smooth. He said it was a bit boring after the race, but I'm sure deep down that haul of points... He'll be absolutely loving it. Pierre Gasly, really strong drive from Gasly today. Started P12 after Perez's penalty. Was started on the harder tyres and was in that group with Giovinazzi early on in the race. But really good overtaking from Gasly today. Which is something that that clinical edge we didn't see at Red Bull. He can be proud of today's drive. His best result since returning to, returning to Toro Rosso. Yeah, happy with Gasly's performance today. I bet he will be as well. Nico Hülkenberg... Again, this man, always some, just like Kimi Raikkonen usually does, both Raikkonen and Hülkenberg have races. You, you barely see them. Hülkenberg had to pit on lap one, ends up ninth. I know Jamie will be very happy with that one. I can't blame him. Strong drive from Hülkenberg today, proving to me that he deserves a chance in Formula One. Couldn't get past Grosjean for a while, though. That was a little concerning. Made me wince a little bit, considering what was on the line there for Hülkenberg to get points, starting where he did, well, after lap one, really good job from the German. Giovinazzi, we've spoken about him a few times, another strong race, I think proving that he deserves another season in Formula One, since he's come back from the summer break, really seemed to have a bit of fire in his belly, and I love that. 
really seems to be improving, out qualifying Kimi Raikkonen, out racing Kimi Raikkonen, which is something we definitely didn't see in the first half of the season. Big thumbs up from me with Gio. Roman Grosjean, I'll, well, I'll, I'll talk about the incident when we talk about Russell. An okay race from Grosjean. Like I say, P11, if you'd have told him that at the beginning of the race, big thumbs up, big improvements. Was good at overtaking for the most part today, Roman Grosjean. Did a good defence against Hulkenberg. But obviously there was that incident with George Russell and the stewards gave it a racing incident. I'll come back to it when we talk about Russell because I'm not too sure about that. Carlos Sainz, a little bit like Hulkenberg, Sainz was two laps down, helped out massively with the safety cars and almost at the end of the race sniffed his way into points. But he had a fight between Ricardo, Kvyat, Stroll and Grosjean. All of them on those last few laps were trying to catch up to the points but tangled and got caught up on each other. So Sainz though... P12 overall, I think he'll be happy with that. But another race where he probably should have got points, qualified so well, but it just got away from McLaren today. Lance Stroll, nice and racy, especially in the early stages, made some good overtakes, but late on, got a puncher, hit the wall. He'll be gutted. Another weekend again where maybe if he'd have kept it clean, he could have scored some points. But just like Grosjean, finished better than where he started. So that's, that's okay, I guess. Daniel Ricciardo... Really good race from him today, except that puncher he got with Giovinazzi. Apart from that, master of the overtake, proven it once again. Love Daniel Ricciardo today, especially in the early stages where it's a little bit dull at front. He made the show. Loved it. Thank you very much, Danny Rick. Danny Kvyat, well, put it this way, the torpedo is back. Got caught off guard a little bit early on with a fight with Sergio Perez. A really good move from Perez. That was tyres went off early in that Toro Rosso, then late on became the torpedo, reignited his inner torpedo, massive dive bomb up the inside of Kimi Raikkonen. Raikkonen could have left a little bit more space, but I think you're pushing to try and put blame on Raikkonen there. In my opinion, Raikkonen out the race, Kvyat ended up going, going on and finishing down at the lower end of the field, but disappointing from Kvyat today. Had a lot of places to make up, but yeah, not one of his best. Robert Kubica, however, his best race of the season. Definitely. Seeing Kubica versus Raikkonen was so cool. That was so nostalgic, and Kubica was giving it absolutely everything down the, th well, second or third DRS zone, whatever you particularly want to say, and through that final sector was so, so racy, and on a track we'd expected him to struggle due to his injuries, he was right on the pace. He really was. And whilst we can't compare him to George Russell this time round, Kubica, I think he can come away from this race with a smile. The fact that he was racing an Alfa Romeo, a racing point, and a Toro Rosso, and giving him a real good run for his money, and overtook Magnussen on track at the end of the race, really good job from Robert today. Really happy for him considering his announcement this week. K-Mag was running in the points, bless him, was running in the points late on, but tyres went away. Something we've seen, I mean, it happened to Grosjean in Spain, just the car wouldn't get the tyres working, couldn't heat up the tyres under the safety car, lost a whole host of places, went from 8th all the way down to 17th, really disappointed in the end for K-Mag. Raikkonen, We've spoke about a, a solid race, but contact with Kvyat. Sergio Perez, again, made some really good moves early on, but ultimately a mechanical failure. And George Russell, a quiet race, fighting with Roman Grosjean. Grosjean, I think you've got to put the blame at his door. I really do. And that's hard for me to say, I know. But when you see Hulkenberg do it a few laps later, just break a little bit early, do an undercut. Grosjean's race, race craft there just, just wasn't good enough and was, was lucky to get away without a penalty. But moving on to a little bit more of the fun stuff before I leave you. It's a really long episode today, but you guys said last time after Monza, you loved it being nice and long. So I thought I'd try and eke it out a little bit longer and take a little bit more time and try and cover every detail. So driver of the day, I've gone with Sebastian Vettel again. That first stint, not so much, but he really proved he was a four-time world champion today in my books. I really think that just that cheeky manoeuvre in that third safety car was brilliant. And he knew getting through that traffic, being robust, would cost him the race win today. He did exactly that, got the moves done, made them stick, won the Grand Prix. 
Vettel's got to be in a shout. Ricardo, I would have given him driver of the day, but that puncher really cost him. Norris P7, no complaints there. Team of the day, Ferrari, strategy bang on. I think that's probably the first time I've ever said that whilst doing YouTube. A 1-2, okay, they mugged off Leclerc a little bit, but they will definitely be thrilled with a 1-2. Move of the day, I've gone with Perez on Kvyat. It was really early on in the race. A lovely switch back and almost side-by-side -side move through Sector 3, but there were a whole host of overtakes in this race that could be given best overtaker for the day. And you don't expect to say that when you head to Singapore. You don't expect an overtake fest, but that's exactly what we got. And our, well, my surprise of the day, Robert Kubica. Didn't expect to see Williams getting in wheel-to-wheel -wheel scraps at all. But, the, I mean, yes, he didn't hold on to the positions. But even the fact he was giving it a real go, I didn't expect that. So I'm giving him my surprise of the day, but a massive smile on my face. And race racing, I've gone with an 8 out of 10. I've sound really excited over this video about this race, and I did really enjoy it. But when I compare it to Germany, when I compare it to Mons at Belgium, I think this was just lacking that fight up front that we needed. And there were stages of the race where it was a little bit flat with the leaders not overtaking. But Ricardo, Perez, Kvyat, Gasly all made it brilliant in that midfield. And before I leave you, let's take a look at the championship. Lewis Hamilton still leads 62 points over Valtteri Bottas, 96 points in front of Charles Leclerc and Max Verstappen. So Ferrari's late charge is probably a little bit too late. But if Mercedes continue their form, get in fourth and fifth and are not on the podium, maybe, just maybe, there could be a little surprise in there. I doubt it. Don't want to excite you too much, but Leclerc does move up into P3 after a second place today. And Sebastian Vettel is only six points away from the top three now. So some of the dodgy races he's had recently, well... Today's race has really put that to bed. Pierre Gasly, well, you can see the points he's on, continues in sixth in the championship. Carlos Sainz continues in P7, but Alex Albon has moved up to P8, and you can see the points. Daniel Ricciardo in ninth on 34, Perez 14th on 25, so that midfield very close indeed. Team's championship, no changes whatsoever. Boring. I know, but Ferrari closing on Mercedes just a little bit. But look, they're comfortably behind. I don't see the fight up front for any of the top three teams changing at all for the rest of the season. McLaren eke out the gap just a little bit more over Renault, but Toro Rosso make a little bit more ground towards Renault. So that midfield fight is definitely in full swing. Williams at the bottom still with one point, 25 points behind Haas. I don't think they're going to be making any ground anytime soon. But that is your lot for the 2019 Singapore Grand Prix. I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments below. I don't think anyone would have predicted the kind of race we were going to have today. I think a lot of us would have expected the streak of awesome Formula 1 races to end this weekend. But now we go into Sochi, which is next weekend. A track which usually is on the little bit more dull side, but I'm optimistic. It's a track where Ferrari should be quick, Mercedes should be quick, and Red Bull should be quick. So again, we could be in store for a six-way fight for the win. Thank you very much for watching. If you're new and you've made it this far, feel free to subscribe. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.